Welcome back to Black News Tonight. August might be the month of the beach and barbecue for many people, but for those who are grounded in black liberation, self-determination, and prison abolition, this is Black August. And here at Black News Tonight, we are committed to celebrating it throughout the month. On August 21st, 1971, Black Panther George Jackson was shot and killed as he allegedly attempted to escape from the infamous San Quentin State Prison. Ten years earlier, in 1961, at the age of 18, for stealing $70 from a gas station, he was sentenced one year to life in prison. According to his judge, that indeterminate sentence was to incentivize a so-called good behavior from Jackson. While he was in prison, he displayed anything but that so-called good behavior that the judge wanted. Instead, he fought for freedom. He was appointed as a field marshal by the Oakland chapter of the Black Panther Party, and he recruited other incarcerated people. He organized sit-ins against segregated cafeterias, and he taught martial arts. C.L.R. James, the great Trinidadian author of Black Jacobins, called George Jackson's writings in Soledad Brother, quote, the most remarkable political documents that have appeared inside or outside the United States since the death of Lenin. Since 1979, Black August has been commemorated to remember George Jackson as well as to honor all political prisoners and celebrate black resistance across the United States. Joining me now is Monifa Bondele. She's a member of the Policy Table Leadership Team at the Movement for Black Lives. Monifa, good to see you as always. Talk to me about Black August and what it means. Thank you so much for having me. I mean, Black August is so important to all of us today that are part of the movement for Black Lives and just the larger Black liberation struggle today because it connects us to our roots. You talked about it. George Jackson was killed in August of 1971. And for nearly a decade, his comrades and people who were incarcerated around the country commemorated his death, studied those writings that you talked about, educated themselves and their families towards black liberation. And what they found was that August had a deep history of black rebellions and resistance. You had the Nat Turner rebellions happened in August. The Watts uprisings happened in August. The Gabriel Prosser rebellions happened in August. The Underground Railroad started in August. And so these scholars behind the walls began to piece together a commemoration month that would honor George Jackson but also Katari Golden, who had helped build the study around Black August, and so many other fallen freedom fighters, George Jackson's brother, Jonathan Jackson. So in 1979, this became a celebration that went throughout the entire California prison system. And by 1980, it became a national commemoration. And it allowed people to really take that time, reflect, to study, to struggle, to make a plan of action. I think the most important thing people can know about Black August is it's not just not another Black History Month. This is not about celebrating people who we necessarily look up to or are palatable to the larger, palatable to the larger society. This is specifically about us celebrating our resistors and our incarcerated freedom fighters. I love the language that uh, the great scholar Robin Kelly gives us uh, love, study, struggle, because for me, that's what Black August is about, exhibiting a profound love and generating uh, a profound love for our people and for freedom. Um, study, as you said, reading deeply and carefully. Um, and then, of course, struggling, being committed to getting into the fray in some form uh, to resist. I, I think that's so, so important when you think about uh, I, I want to start with with that that love piece of it. When we think about what it means to love black folk and to black and to love black freedom or just freedom in general, how, how does that resonate? How does that idea resonate with you? You know, it's powerful. One of the most powerful elements of Black August is that when it started in the prison system, throughout the month of August, prisoners displayed the high, highest levels of love and discipline and solidarity. Mm. It was actually frightening to the prison guards. You could hear a pin drop during meals, you know, out in the yard, where typically what we're taught when we look at, you know, television and the media that, you know, prisoners are constantly being violent with one another, fighting, you know, all of that paused for August as the leaders in those prisons modeled what we, how we should treat one another and relate to one another behind the walls 
And then that grew outside of the walls, right? Because people went home and they interacted with their families and they're like, I experienced this powerful month where we as, as, as uh, people who society has cast away, displayed love to one another. We read together. They had their reading of uh, books, book clubs during the month of August. And we can do this outside of the walls. So that is what really resonates with us. We picked it up in the Malcolm X grassroots movement, which is a member of the movement for black lives. Decades later in the early 2000s, you know, we launched a black August hip hop project to bring in a new generation to study about black August and also to model that love. The idea that no one in our community is disposable. We'll t we're taught that people who are in prison, people who are incarcerated in jails and detention centers are people we shouldn't think about their human rights. We shouldn't think about them at all. And yet here they are, the intellectual architects of one of the most profound commemorations that we have because it ties us back to our Black liberation roots beyond what they'll teach us in school. And that's why I like that second piece of its study, because not only are we reading about our history, not only are we reading about struggle, but we're specifically reading, at least in my tradition, in my experience, the writings of the great prison intellectuals. So we're reading the Sol Soledad Brother by George Jackson. We're reading, uh, you know, Live from Death Row by Mumia Abu-Jamal. We're reading Asada. You know, we're learning, as you pointed out, that some of the, the most brilliant minds, some of the most great political thinkers that we've ever had were caged and they still have so much to offer, not just before they got in and after they got out, but while they were in. I think that's so important. Before we go though, there's this third piece of struggle I want you to help me think through right now. What should we be struggling against? What should we be struggling for? You know, one of the prisoners who we talk about often is Dr. Matulu Shakur, who's the stepfather of Tupac Shakur, mm. and he's currently incarcerated for the liberation of Asada Shakur and many other things. He has a saying, dare to struggle, dare to win. Dare to struggle, dare to win. Anytime you read one of Matulu, uh, Matulu's writings, you will see that. And essentially what he is saying is that, you know, uh, your previous speaker, she said, faith without works is dead, right? We have got to struggle for the things that we want, not only for our families, but for our community, for the global black world, right? And we have to step into that with power. And if they can talk like that, if they can write those things and give those types of instructions from behind the walls, then we can do it outside. And it continues. Not only do we commemorate them, not only do we make sure that their work and their intellectual work and their freedom fighting work is visible, we have to move into prison abolition because we know that they shouldn't be caged and we shouldn't have cages. You know, this idea of abolition really grows out of a long tradition. Some people are just hearing about it now, but it is many of these intellectuals from behind the walls that have talked about how do we really make our communities safe? How do we really help to quote unquote rehabilitate people? What are the services? What are the care uh, interventions that we need so that no one has to be in a cage? That type of thinking comes out of our prisons and this is what Black August is about. That is what Black August is all about. Love, study, and struggle. Monifa, thank you so much for joining me and happy Black August. Everybody, make sure you join me in the conversation because we wanna hear from you. Head over to our BNC Instagram and Twitter pages. Let us know how you feel. Also visit our website, bnc.tv. You can also subscribe to our YouTube page to check out clips from the show. Coming up next.